praise the Lord. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Somebody will do exalt the name of the Lord. We do praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. For he says that can a mother forget the baby that she is giving a son to in Isaiah chapter number 49 but he says yes they may forget but I the Lord will never forget about you Amen. why won't the Lord forget about you because many of us we say there is a saying in our community is out of sight out of mind so if I can't see you you are not in my thoughts but the Bible says in Isaiah 49 I will not forget about you because I have engraving your image in my power and beloved an image that is engraved cannot easily be erased so many of us are sitting here this morning and we are saying, how can God have all of our images in his palm? Beloved, if he holds the whole world in his hands, how big is our faces together in his palm? He said, because I've got your image, so God sits on his throne this morning. He opens up his palm and you see his son Kwame, and he says, Kwame, your words are before me. I know your pain, and I know your name. I know your struggles, and I am bringing you through. I am the God that I promised to honor you in the name of Jesus, of all of your endeavor. You are not forgotten. Amen. Out of sight of man, you are out of their mind. It is when they are with you, they see you, that your thought comes to them. But when they leave your presence, that is the end of your story. Have you been in a situation whereby you go and see a brother with your problems? And as if they sympathize with you, the moment you leave their mind, they go on WhatsApp. I didn't know Pastor Putin even pay his mortgage last month. <laughs> and he came saying that God will bless you, God will bless you. Why couldn't he fulfill his mortgage promise last month? He's come to me to see if I can sort him out. But God says, because your image, anytime he lifts his hands, He's seen his sons. He's seen his daughters. How can he be forgotten? There is a song we sing that I am not forgotten. God knows my name. And beloved, this morning, that is not why I came. Amen. But I believe there's somebody, maybe you are at a point of giving up. You have tried everything. Maybe you came to check this morning to say this is your last resort. If God does not come through for you, you are done with Christianity and that God. But I tell you today that you have not come to any other God nor a religion. But you have come to the air cabal. Hallelujah. The mighty God. The mighty God. And if he be a mighty God, he is mighty to provide. He is mighty to deliver. He is mighty to rescue. And he is mighty to preserve and to protect. Somebody put your hands together for this mighty God. Amen. Amen. But it's lovely to see all of you, praise God, uh, all lovely God people. It's such a privilege and honor to be able to share the word of God with you. 
And I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, it is your year of double honor. Beloved, check the neighbor you are sitting by next time because the next time you see them, it will not be in the same clothes, in the same place. It will not be in the same location. It will not be in the same address. Then you are by Yakata, by Yakata. Ye man nebro skapa. Ye man nebro skapa. I prophesy over your life that the next time your neighbor see you, your address and location would have changed. Your title would have changed in the mighty name of Jesus because the earth above God, the God who is mighty to provide, mighty to supply, mighty to change, would have changed your present circumstance and has elevated you to a place of honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It is a year of double honor. Amen. And the Lord gave us a way of seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto us. Amen. What are the other things? We touch that every kingdom has a king or a queen. Every kingdom has a king or a queen. And every kingdom also has a domain, dominion. Every kingdom has a subject or citizens. Amen. Amen. So in the kingdom, you see, the things of the spirit are symmetrical. What happens in the spirit happens in the natural. Are you with me? What happens in the spirit happens in the natural. And in most cases, if it does not happen in the spirit, it never happens in the natural. It happens in the spirit and it may manifest in the natural. So what is naturally happening in our earthly realm right now is what is Happening in the spiritual realm, in other words, it is it's alongside. So in the kingdom of God and in the kingdom of heaven, we have the king of kings on his throne. And in the kingdom of the United Kingdom, we have the queen on the throne. But the good news is the earthly kingdom are subject to change. Amen. 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 But it comes and it goes. Presidents come and presidents go. Government come and government go. But you can be rest assured that the kingdom of God remains the same. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And if God on his throne in the kingdom, he has a domain, and in the kingdom, he has citizens, the children of the kingdom. We are the children of the kingdom of God. So if we be the children of the kingdom of God, then it is the responsibility of our king, the mighty God, the El Elyon, the Lord Most High, it is his responsibility to take care of us. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, God will take care of you. Amen. It doesn't matter how bleak the situation is. At the time, Herman had prepared the gallows to take care of Mordecai. At that very hour, the Lord stepped in. He's never late. And is he will not be late for you. Amen. 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 So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, it is your year of double honor. Amen. Amen. And turn to the other neighbor and say, the Lord will honor you. 
Beloved, when we get the principle of the first things first, we don't need to pray for honor. Honor will come unto you. And I was, as I was preparing, I wanted to just go away from this and the Lord said to me, no son, I want you to dwell in there because I want my people to understand that when they keep me and seek after me with their heart and when they search for me for truth and in righteousness and they, 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 they make me their priority, they don't need to pray for the very things they pray for. Honor will automatically follow them. So the Lord is saying that when we seek after his righteousness, when we seek his kingdom, when his kingdom becomes our priority, when we think of the kingdom, when we dream of the kingdom, when we talk about the kingdom, then the things we seek in the world will follow after us. They'll begin to follow after The honor and the double honor we, we have, he has ordained and prophesied over our life, those honor will follow us. When you make kingdom principle your focus, you don't have to go chasing for honor. Yeah. Honor will come after you. Yeah. Bible say, yea, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord, not in the house of the prime minister, not in the house of the pastor, not in the house of the prophet, not in the house of the bishop. So when we make the house of the Lord, our dwelling place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We shall say of the Lord, He is my strength and my refuge. If the Lord be your strength and your refuge, who can be against you? Ash Kapayakata. He says, Surely they will gather. But because it is not of me, it shall not stand. In Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 7. Say, let us go to Judah. Let us harass them. Let us set a wicked king among them. To torment them and to frustrate them. But that says the Lord. It shall not stand. I have come to declare unto somebody. It does not matter what the enemy has done against you. I don't know what meeting they have gathered about you. That you have not been invited. Can you imagine? They call a meeting about you. But you yourself is not invited for the meeting. I declare unto you today. Whatever the outcome of that meeting. We nullify in the name of Jesus. And declare that it shall not stand. We declare it not and void. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord honor you. Amen. Wherever you are at. Amen. May honor look for you. Amen. I said honor deals with titles and position. Yes. May the Lord elevate you. Amen. From where you are at. To the place where he has ordained and determined you to be. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I said honor also deals with status. Amen. May the Lord raise your status. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say, wherever you see an honor, there is also glory. Hallelujah. In the New King James, the, the word for honor is glory. Hallelujah. Where you see honor, there is also glory. May the Lord ayapa kata. He say, what is man that you are mindful of him? That you crown him with glory and honor. Hallelujah. Glory and honor goes together. May your glory not fade in the mighty name of Jesus. May you come into the manifestation of the glory of God over your life. Because Bible says that then you are crowned with glory and also honor. Hallelujah. Amen. What is man? What is man? Maybe your neighbors might not see the glory of your life. But in this year, they will see the glory of God over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe they have looked upon you and they have disqualified you. They have looked at your accent and they say, what kind of accent is this? In this organization, nobody with this accent has risen to this level. Nobody of your color has ever achieved any height like this. But I declare unto you, it shall not be by your color or by your accent, nor by your address. But it shall be by the God of it, with whom you send, the El Kabod, who goes before you like a mighty warrior in the mighty name of Jesus and fight your cause and gives you the victory. May every battle that you face, hey, may the El Kabod, God, the mighty God, go before you, fight those battles for you, and make you more than conqueror in the mighty name of Jesus. For that is the word of God concerning your life. Say, yea, Yapayakata. Even though 
I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Somebody receive comfort right now. I don't know what the enemy has brought unto you. That your peace is disturbed. That your peace is taken away. And that you are struggling right now. May the comfort of the Elohim, may the peace of the Lord, that surpass all understanding. I'm not talking of the peace of man. That man can take away. I'm talking about the peace of God. He says, my peace I live with you. Not as the world did, but the peace of my tent. Kingdom. The peace of the kingdom is the shalom of God. May the shalom of God, and that's not the peace, but shalom encompasses your well-being. It encompasses your prosperity. It encompasses your honor and your glory. May everything within the shalom be ayapayakata, be multiplied unto you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 6 Matthew chapter number 6 verse number 33 and we move to Matthew chapter number 13 verse number 44 and you go to Proverbs chapter number 23 verse number 23 Have you got those scriptures not now? But Take me to verse number 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Anytime you read a word and you hear or you see bad, it means that things are about to take on a different trend. Amen. Things are about to turn to another level. Things are about to change. Amen. So we are worrying about the things we should wear. We are worrying about the things we should eat. We are, now we don't even know what to eat anymore. Amen. We are worrying about the, the place we will sleep, where we will go, the shoes we will wear, the, the, the watches we will wear, and all of that. Amen. We are worried about all those things. But the word of God is admonishing us that these things, even non-believers, people who don't fear God, the, the, the Gentiles, those who are not called, they seek after this thing. So if we, the called ones, are chasing after, I mean, sometimes someone say it's an abomination for a believer and non-believer to be chasing for the same job. <laughs> Amen. That we, the called ones, are seeking after those things. So he says, things are about to turn into a different level. Amen. 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 But only three letters, B U T, can turn your life to a dimension you have never dreamt about. Amen. But it's the key today, let that but only three letter word, let it be a key. To turn your destiny around. Amen. 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 It says, but seek ye first. What? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things. The things we worried about. The things we seek after. The things we chase after. Those things will now be giving unto us. We will not go and hustle for them. We will not go and run after them. We will not go and chase after them. Those things will come to us. Those things will come to us when we make the kingdom our focus. Is Christ the center of your life? Do you talk about Christ? Do you think about Christ? And do you share Christ? Amen. 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 By the principle of first things, when we commit to the kingdom, he is bound by his word and by his covenant to take care of us. 
Because then we become his responsibility. We become his assignment. And he becomes our king. Is he the king of your heart? He said, I am about to turn. When you capture this key, when you get understanding of this key, the very things you chase after, they will begin to chase after you. Do you believe that? How many often have we chased after things that the things run away from us? The moment you appear to be close to the thing, it's like a child playing hide and say, Jack, where are you? The moment you are beginning to find, they, 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 they hide again. And gradually, they lead you out of your purpose. And out of your destiny. But say, in order to stay on your destiny program, because your destiny is not given to you by the things of this world, by the Father who made you, the one who knows your name, and I've called you according to his purpose over your life. Say, seek. Search and you will find that which I have prepared for you. Is there anybody who wants to make this year 2019 the year of seeking after the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Not just for the other things to follow you, but for the love of Christ. There is a difference. There is a difference. Seeking after God for you to get the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and the mansions and stuff is different from seeking after God for the love of Christ. When you consider your sinful nature, what is man? That God has been merciful unto me. That me who was once not a people, but now God has crowned me with his glory and his honor. Then I fall on my, my knees and I begin to worship and to love him for the mercy and grace he has extended to me. Amen. It is different from falling on my knees and worshiping him for the things I can get than for who he is. I said, God is a descendant of our thought. The intent of our thought. Why are you worshipping the way you are worshipping? He knows. I said, see. And I said, see involves the element of searching. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 44. Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven... Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. Now let us see how the kingdom of God operates and how it is like. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 13 verse number 44, the Bible says that the kingdom again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. Hey, Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 33. But seek ye first. And I said, seek involve the element of searching. You don't search for things that are on the plane. Hello? You don't search for things that are on the plane. So now, the kingdom of God is being compared to a treasure that is hid. You don't find treasures on the plane. So, to find, you've got to search for it. Are you willing to search? Are you willing to seek? 
It means that it will not come to you on a silver platter. But you've got to make effort to search for it. In other words, you've got to dig deep. You've got to build an altar. You've got to make sacrifices. You've got to seek. You've got to meditate to find about the kingdom. Unto treasure hid in the field. The which when a man find had found, he hide it. And for joy thereof, go and sell it all that he had and buy it that fell. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is powerful. This is powerful. Carry on, Pastor. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 Now, I want you to look at the scripture. Praise the Lord. You see, the things of God are very simple. It is we, the pastors, that make it complex so that you think that we are powerful. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There's no power in ourselves. The power is in the word. <laughs> so if you also dig deep in the word, you become powerful. Amen. Amen. Yes. It is very simple. The Bible says it is like treasure. Treasure are valuables. Amen. That is hid in the field. Oh, Jesus, help me. And a man find the treasure in the field. What do you do when you find a treasure? No, for, for a minute, keep your eyes off the screen. When you find a treasure, what do you do? You take it and you keep it. Amen. Amen. But let's look at the difference. You see, the oppression of the world is different from kingdom principles. But let's see the kingdom principle. Now, this man finds the treasure. The man finds it. He hides it. Because when he found it, it could be his. But he says, no, 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 no. I can't take it. The man finds it. He hides it where no one can take it. And he goes and for the joy of the treasure, the Elohim, the name of the Lord, the peace, the love of God, he goes, what does he do? He sell all that he has. So if he has valuable things, why would he go after this treasure? Many of us, the things we are seeking after, they are the things we must sell. That we can obtain the kingdom. Amen. That we can obtain the benefit of the kingdom. Amen. That we can obtain the principle of the kingdom. Amen. That we can obtain the life of the kingdom. So the joy, it, it, it is not hard for this man. It is not painful for this man. He's excited because that which he has found cannot be compared with the things he has. So in order to to receive or to achieve or to have that which he treasures most. He goes and puts everything that he has and he sells it and he buys the field. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter number 23, verse number 23. Don't turn there. He says, buy the truth and sell it not. Many of us, we know the truth, but because they say truth hurts, we hide 
from the truth. He said, God understands. We begin to make justification for our wrongdoings. But those are the things we must sell in order to buy the truth and not trade it. Not. So it's wisdom and understanding. So I believe this afternoon, wisdom is coming to somebody. Amen. Understanding is coming to somebody. Amen. 45. Understanding is coming to somebody. Seeking first the kingdom. But if you are careful to adhere the word of the Lord, but can turn your life around, can change your life. It will shift your focus for the things that do not matter and begin to focus on the things that matter. The choir sang a song, Jesus, you are the center of my focus. Is he truly the center of your focus? If he be the center of your focus, how much time do you give to him? These days we spend more time with our mobile phones than with the Lord. Mobile phones have become the center of our life. We can't do without the case. I say again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking godly pearls. Amen. So now it is valuable against the valuable. Amen. It is a treasure against all his possessions. And it is pearl which are also to be treasured. Amen. Amen. 46. Who when he found one pearl of great price? <coughs> one pearl with great price. This one has pearls, but he found one with a great price. That means that it was not comparable to the pearl that he had. Maybe 10 of his pearls was equal to that one pearl. So he found one with a great price. In other words, one much valuable than he has. Went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now will you give up your mobile phone? With time with the Lord. Amen. Will you give your Facebook page? Some of you, 5 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And I see those people, they are doing nine shifts. So you posting pictures when you are sleeping. They will not even post one scripture. That is what the word of God is saying. Maybe you think that I've got everything together, but there is one thing you see that you need, like the rich young ruler. Say, Rabbi, I obey the laws. I am not a fornicator, I am not an adulterer, I am not an adulterer, I, I, I mean, I am not a thief. I love my neighbor as myself, I, I, I do everything. Jesus looked at him and said, yes, but you lack one thing. Your heart is in your treasure. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor. Jesus was that one great price bell. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. Did the man come back? Why? Because he had great wealth. He could not sell his wife. The Bible admonishes us to sow in tears and weep in joy. 14, 13, Matthew 13, 44. For the joy, for the excitement, he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Because he knows that there is treasure on that field. What treasure are you looking after? Are you seeking God? Is God your focus? 
Is he your priority? Is he your thought? Is he in your thought? Beloved, it is a year of our double honor. But if we learn first things first, we can't live anyhow. We can't behave anyhow. And go singing is a year of double honor. So we will live anyhow. We will do things anyhow. And honor will come to us. It is not so. You've got to do that which will bring honor unto us. Because the Bible says that pride comes before a fall. So it's humility before honor. So you can't walk in pride and say it's a year of my double honor. So you'll be arrogant and be filled with pride and think that God will honor you double. It will not happen. But when you walk in humility, when you humble yourself before the Lord, the Lord will see your humility. Bible say he will raise the humble. He will elevate the humble. But the proud he resists. So when you humble yourself before the Lord, the Lord will lift you up. Amen. Will elevate you to the place beyond your wildest dream. Why? Because you are working in his word and in his principle. You are not taking the word out of context and say, Chisara, Sarah, what will be, will be. God has said it's my double honor, so I will go doing all the things. I want to do and still work in honor. It does not work like that. So if we will come into the alignment and fulfillment of the word of God, we must see a scandal first. We must be Christ-focused, Christ-centered, and think of the things of God and honor will follow us because he is highly honored, exalted, giving a name above all names. And at the mention of his name, all knees bow and tongues confess that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So if you walk with an honorable God, a God of all honor, and you, are dead, you just hang around such a God, you also become honorable. Are you with me? Let me understand that. One time I ministered after a service and a young man came to me and said, Pastor, I love God, but I love money. Say, that is my problem. Because of my love for money, I can't commit to God. And it was a struggle for him. Because when business calls and God calls, he will answer business and leave God. He said, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to be able to serve God with my money and not save money and leave God. Maybe in this service you are running after things and you have relegated God to the back. Just talk to him. He's a loving father. He wants to honor you. In fact, it is his good intention that you are honored. It is his will that you are honored. And it is his will that you walk in honor and a representation of him. Talk to him. That this year, whatever it takes to seek him, to search for him, Whatever you need to give up, 
that you seek him. Whatever you must sell to buy this film. You see, it's it's an investment. This man found the film, he sold all he had, and he bought it. What are you investing in your Christian, in your work with God? Thank you, Father. Talk to him. One minute. There will be a seeking church. There will be a seeking family. Maybe you are in this service and you are searching for God. Beloved, it says that the assurance is whoever seek, find. And whoever knock, the door will be open. As you seek, you will find. It is our prayer that you will find him. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Did you receive something for today? I don't you put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah.